Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today I've just got a quick demo video here of some of the recent performance improvements to NGScope Client. Now that 0.11 is out the door, one of the first things I wanted to do in preparation for 0.2 was improving the performance of both the CDR PLL and the iPattern. These have historically been big bottlenecks in a lot of our more complex filter graphs and I wanted to make them faster. So I'm pleased to announce that both are now GPU accelerated. There are a few edge cases where if either your GPU doesn't have good 64-bit integer support or a couple of rarer combinations of inputs and configurations, it will still fall back to the CPU side implementation. But for the majority of use cases, it should be running on the GPU and massively faster than before. So what we have is two signals coming into a thunder scope off of a ethernet differential pair through a test fixture. Then we subtract them to get the differential signal. We recover the clock. In this case, this is 125 megahertz because we're looking at 100 megabit ethernet. And then we plot the eye pattern of that and then measure the width of the upper and lower eyes of the three level waveform and then bathtub curves of the upper and lower eyes. So now let's go grab a waveform and here we're looking at the entire 100 milliseconds of acquired signal. This is 50 million points at 500 mega samples per second and this is the subtracted differential output of the two halves of the pair. And then here we're looking at the individual legs of the pair and we can clearly see the three level modulation. We've got one level down here, one near the center and one up near the top. And then down here at the eye pattern, again, same thing, the characteristic three level eye of MLT3. We can tell it's not PAM3 because there's no transition from the plus one to the minus one state and vice versa. And if we mouse over the edges of the eye, we can start measuring the bear on some of the openings, but we're not seeing a whole lot because this is only one acquisition. And then here is the bathtub curves. And then we got a couple of stats. We can see now with this one acquisition, we've got about a 6.3 nanosecond opening on both of the eyes and the horizontal axis. And we've integrated 12 and a half million UIs and 50 million samples. But one waveform isn't too exciting. Let's just start triggering and see how much more data we can acquire. And I'm gonna show this in real time without any editing. So right now, this is already two gigapoints captured and coming up on a billion UIs. Pulling in data at about 8.2 Hertz, 100 million points per trigger event, 50 million on each channel. So that's about just over 800 mega samples per second coming in off the scope over 10 gig ethernet. This is actually, I'm sitting in my office and connected over 10 gig ethernet to the scope on a PC on the lab on the other side of the building. And we are live streaming in the time we've been talking, we're up to 15 gig samples of integrated data and 4 billion UIs. And now we're starting to see all this low probability jitter on the top and bottom of the eye opening. We could see there seems to be some occasional reductions in amplitude of the signal that are relatively rare. Now we're this is around uh, E minus eight to uh, E minus six bear, depending on how high you go up. Looks like mostly in the minus seven range. And this is a one in 10 million event, and we're seeing it very clearly because of the enormous amount of data that has been collected in just a couple of seconds. And already nearly 30 gigasamples in about seven and a half billion UIs. This is real time, I'm not speeding this up. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.